All right, at the top of the page, it says a rational equation, so it's going to be different now. Rather than just this plus this, or this minus this, an expression, we have an equal sign. So biggest difference is we didn't have an equation before, no equal sign, now we do. So there is an example on the left of a rational expression. There's no equal sign, okay? On the right, you have a rational equation, so now we do have an equal sign. And remember, who can fill in the blank? A rational expression is undefined for any value of a variable that makes a denominator equal to what? Zero. Good. Some answers to rational equations may cause a denominator in the problem to be equal to zero and therefore must be rejected. So we have to check. Okay? If you get an answer and it makes the denominator equal to zero, you have to reject it because we can't have an undefined fraction. This will be evident when you check your answer. We always check our answers in the original fractions. Solutions that do not satisfy or do not check or make the denominator zero are called extraneous solutions. So let's take a look at the two equations. The one on the left, 5 over x plus 6 equals x over x minus 3. We're just looking now at what values would make the denominator 0. So what two values? What would make the denominator on the left? What would make x plus 6 equal to 0? Yeah, negative 6. What would make x minus 3 equal to 0? A positive 3. So the extraneous solutions for these two equations would be negative 6 and 3. If I were to get that as an answer, I'd have to reject it because it can't make my original fractions undefined. So let's work our way right to left since we have the quadratic all the way to the left. Can anyone tell me what the extraneous solutions would be here? Working right to left, what plus 2 is 0? A negative 2. So negative 2, if I had that for an answer, I'd have to reject. For the middle one, it'd be 2 minus 2. And then for here, remember, you can always set it equal to 0. So the two solutions that would make it 0, once you factor, are negative 2 and 2. Well, I already have those. I don't need to write them twice. Okay? So as we were going over the warm-up, Jameson talked about, or actually before we started the notes, after the warm-up, we talked about how we would solve an equation on the board. He mentioned that he would do a cross product, so that would be a proportion. The other way to do it would be to do what um, Paige was talking about, get the denominators all the same, and then we would clear the denominator. So there's two different methods you can use, and it's really up to you. So when I show you how to go over these, I'm showing you the easiest way to do each one. Okay, so in number one, solve each equation, and then we have to check for extraneous solutions. So we're only looking at the denominator. I don't, you don't need to do a full check, okay? We should check to make sure it works, but in number one, I have a proportion. A proportion is a fraction equivalent to another fraction, so the simplest way to do this one would be to cross multiply. So I have 3 times x minus 3, which would be 3x minus 9. You have to multiply the 3 times both terms. Equals 2 times x plus 1 is 2x plus 2. Go ahead and isolate x. So you have um, a linear equation. There's no degree 2. So if you were to isolate x, there's a variety of different ways you can do that. But I tend to subtract the smaller number of x's from the larger. So we have x minus 9 equals 2, add the 9, 
and x equals 11. So if I check for an extraneous solution, I go back to the denominators. I check to make sure I don't get 0. 11 plus 1 is 12. It's not 0, it's okay. 11 minus 3 is 8. It's not 0, it's okay. So I can keep the answer. Now number 2. Number two says one half times three x minus one is equivalent to one fourth times five x plus two. Let's rewrite that in terms of one fraction on each side. So I put this over one, and then one times three x minus one is three x minus one over two times one, two. Go ahead and rewrite the right side as one fraction. Put this over 1, multiply your numerators, multiply the denominators. When you do that, 1 times 5x plus 2 is 5x plus 2, and then 4 times 1 is 4. We have a proportion again, so the easiest way to do this one would be to cross multiply. 2 times 5x plus 2 is 10x plus 4 equals 3 times, or 3x minus 1 times 4 is 12x minus 4. Go ahead and isolate x. So this time I'll do it the opposite way, because some of you, instead of subtracting 10 from 12, maybe you want to subtract 12 from 10. So now those cancel, I'm left with negative 2x plus 4 equals negative 4. So that means I have to subtract 4, and I have negative 2x equals negative 8. Divide by negative 2, those cancel out, and x equals negative 8 over negative 2 is 4. If you did it a different way, by subtracting the 10x, you should have gotten the same thing. So I go back up to the denominators. Well, first of all, do we have any denominator up here in the original fraction that has an x in it? No. This is over 1. This is over 1. That's a 4 and a 2. So there is no restrictions for this question. There's no excluded values. So before we move to the back, the first two we're solving a proportion. We're going to see some on the back where we're going to want to solve by clearing the fractions, which really means getting rid of the denominators. Before you can clear the denominators, you have to have them all the same. Okay? Um, then we solve the resulting equation from the numerators, because we're going to cross them out, and then we go back and check, okay? So in order to cross out the denominators, they must all be the same. So that's the first question, number three. The denominators are already the same. So you can clear them and then just solve the numerator. So when the denominators are the same, you can clear them, subtract the 2x, you get 4x. Divide by 4, and x is 2. Don't cross it out too, um, too much. For instance, don't go like this, because is 2 going to be an extraneous solution? When I take and substitute this answer in the original equation, 2 minus 2 is? zero. Same over here. Two minus two is zero. So I have to reject this. It's extraneous. So what would the solution be here? 
If I reject the 2, it's not going to be 0, but think about systems of equations. Where they cross, you have one solution. If they were parallel lines, they didn't cross. The answer was not undefined, but no solution. If you don't want to write the words, you can write the O or 0 with the line through it. That means no solution. And then 4. 4 doesn't look too scary, right? It's got some numbers in there, 8, 3, and 12. One thing you can do is just combine the left if you want and then cross multiply. That's one option. Or we can clear the denominators. So I'll let you pick. Do you want to end up doing cross multiplication or would you like to clear the denominator? Cross multiplication? So that means we're going to combine these two. So I would first rewrite, put this over 1 and 5 times x. I would rewrite the left as 5x. 8 times 1 is 8. Minus 2 times x is 2x. 3 times 1 is 3. So I'm not even going to write down the right side right now. When I look at the least common denominator for 8 in 3. And you don't have to pick the least, right? We talked about that. Do you want to pick the least or you just want to multiply this side by 3, this side by 8? Let's just do it that way. So 3 times 5x is 15x. All over 3 times 8 is 24 minus 2x times 8, 16x over 24. What do you get when you subtract those two fractions? Negative x, good. So negative x over 24. Now let's bring down the x plus 7 over 12. Now go ahead and cross multiply. And I'll do it up here on the board. I'll do it on the side, 24 times 7, so 7 times 4 is 28, carry the 2, and then 14 plus 2 is 168. So to solve this equation, I would want to bring over the negative 24x. So I have the number on one side, and this would be negative 36x. Can you tell me what 168 divided by 36 is? Does it go in evenly? No. We're going to get a fraction for an answer, and that's okay. So subtract or divide by negative 36, and we're going to have to reduce that. So on your calculator, do 168 divided by negative 36, and then hit math, enter, enter. It's probably your easiest way to do that. So x is going to equal negative 14 thirds. In my original fraction, if I look at the denominators, in my original fraction, did I have any x's in the denominator? So there was no restrictions here. I don't have to worry about checking that answer. You're probably thinking, good, <laughs> because it would be hard to check. So looking at number 5, do you want to end up cross-multiplying or do you want to clear the denominator? You like cross-multiplication? So if you do cross multiplication, you have to do the same thing, and we have to combine these two on the left, okay? So when I do that, well, 7 times 2 gives me 14, so I'm not going to do the method of times 14 and then times 7x, okay? When I do that, this gives me a denominator of 14x and then a numerator of 2 plus 12x. Minus, how do I make that 14 look like 14x? What do I have to times x? So I did it a little bit different. That time I did use the least common denominator. So minus 14x, so that would be 3x. So now I'll go ahead and combine that to one fraction, and then we'll cross multiply. So keep the bottom. When I simplify the top, 
going to be 2 plus 12x minus 3x is 9x. Now I'll bring down this sign. The cross product here, we're going to have x times x. So we're going to end up with an x squared. So we have to do 14x times x, which is 14x squared. 14 times 4. Does anyone know what 14 times 4 is? 56. And we're going to have 56x equals, now this cross product, 2x times 2 is 4x plus... 2x times 9x is 18x squared. With a degree 2 equation, quadratic, you want it set equal to 0 so you can factor. So I'm going to bring everything that's on the left and move it to the right side. So by subtracting, it gives me cancel, cancel, 0. Whatever you do on the left, you have to do to the right. So subtract 14x squared and subtract 56x. I just wrote it underneath its like term. So 4 minus 56 is negative 52. And then what's 18x squared minus 14x squared? It's going to be plus, right, because it was positive 18. So 4x squared. I'm going to write that with the x squared first. So this is really 4x squared minus 52x. Well, I'm just saying it out loud. I know I have a GCF of x. I want you to check while I answer the phone, does 4 go into 52? Okay, when we pull out the GCF of 4x, we're going to have 4x times x minus, how many times did it go in? Did you guys check that? Well, 4 times 3 is 12, so it's going to be x minus 13 equals 0. So for this factor, what's the solution when you're solving? For that factor, does anyone know what would make it equal to 0? If we don't, let's take and solve it over here. The old way that I thought maybe we could skip at this level of Algebra 2 would be once you get your two factors, take each factor, set it equal to 0, and solve for x. So divide by 4, x is 0. Add 13, x equals 13. So now I have to go back up to the original fraction up here. I had a 7x here, there was no x there, and I need to look just where the x's were. Are any of those two numbers going to make those denominators 0? So is 7 times 0, 0? Yes, 7 times 13, 0? No. So I'm going to reject the 0 because it makes both this denominator and this denominator a 0. So the answer is 13. All right, next one. Since we haven't done a clearing the denominators just yet, okay, we've been setting up proportions, let's actually clear the denominator, okay? So in this question, give every term that doesn't have a denominator a denominator, and I want to make them all look the same, okay? Does anyone see right away how I can make this x plus 5 look like 3x plus 15 times 3? Good. So multiply it by 3. Whenever you do to the bottom, you have to do the top. So now I have 10x over 3x plus 15 equals 12 over 3x plus 15. What do I have to multiply the 1 by to give me the denominator of 3x plus 15? 3x plus 15. So times 3x plus 15 times 3x plus 15. And we get... 2 times 3x, 6x, 2 times 15, 30, all over 3x plus 15. This method may be a little bit easier because you may not, in your cross product, end up with an x squared. Once I cross out the denominator, I'm left with 10x equals 
12 plus 6x plus 30, which is a linear equation. It's a degree 1. Subtract the 6x. We've got 4x equals, combine uh, 12 and 30, and we get 42. How many times does 4 go into 42? 10 and a half. Good. Well, I guess not necessarily good yet. Is that going to make the denominators up here 0 if you plug in 10 and a half? No. So that's the answer. We're done.